Hi, everybody. I'm intuitive medium Sandy Duncan, and I'm sitting with my friends from the Rescue Mediums, Edna Dargy, Michael Lamport, Jackie Dennison, and Allison Wynn Ryder. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi, Sunday. Hi. Hi Sunday. I'm so excited today to talk about the episode with the Singh family. That is season seven, episode four, veryparanormal.com. Please check out veryparanormal.com. You'll be so thrilled you did. So much to learn, and in particular, this episode. It'll help you follow along. So I am so excited to hear your thoughts. This is one of the very few episodes that involve um, one of the people living in the home who could actually be instrumental in helping Jackie and Allison. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And Kieran, the young uh, a girl, you know, one of the, I think she was 17 when she Kieran at the time. Mm -hmm. um she'd um she had been overshadowed yeah. uh very in fact it wasn't even an overshadowing it was an attachment wasn't it Alison it was it was an attachment yeah. yeah yeah so she got a spirit attachment to her which was affecting her and the whole family so yeah. yes you're absolutely right Sandy we did have to bring her in as part of the rescue That's true. Um, mm -hmm. be because the spirit was physically attached to her yeah was, we were asking her questions initially weren't we jackie mm. jackie and allison prepare to sit down with kieran the family's middle daughter for an informal interview we've asked you to um, come and talk to us because we need to rule some things out otherwise we can't carry on with the investigation okay, okay. do you let us know kieran if you feel spirit around you in the house and out of the house or yes. is it what in view of what you've just told us um if we were to say to you we think you have a spirit attachment to you mm -hmm. how would you feel about that kind of a little, a little bit disturbing okay scary one for the family you know can you imagine being a parent and seeing that happening to your daughter it must have been horrendous mm. yeah i know <laughs> because because we met we we got the uh um a copy of the uh, uh video that the family had shot yes. with, the, with with the girl uh on the sofa and yeah. and the father trying to uh basically calm her down and everything because yeah. she was she was really disturbed but you're yeah. right now the, the other the, the family the entire family was worried about her all of yeah cool. the day when karen was possessed well it was really nerve-wracking i'd never seen anything like this you hear me Come on, come on, come on, speak up now, come on. I had this weird feeling with uh, anger, sadness, uh, desperation. It's your papa talking to me, my baby, come on. I had no control of my body at that time, so I don't know what I could have done. It went to this point where she started screaming, let me go, let me go. Question about that, um, because we you allowed us to see that up close, Michael, that video, the home movie of uh you know frightened parents and um possession of of kieran but here's my question kieran in that video is shouting let me go let me go do you is that kieran shouting or is that the spirit inside her shouting i think it's the spirit the spirit is, you know it could have been both because she was she yeah. was completely um overshadowed by the thoughts and feelings uh, interestingly enough though that uh, a piece of film footage that you were just talking about um Alison and I did not see that until mm. the episode uh went out mm -hmm. we didn't see that film footage right. so it was a shock mm. to us it to was. actually see mm. it yeah exactly and she said her body didn't feel like it was her own well of course that's you right. know with an attachment that's exactly how she would feel isn't it yeah. Edna, did you yeah. see that uh, film footage beforehand? Had you I, seen that? I, no. <clears throat> I, I was told about it. Right. Verbally, they, they talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But that's the first time I saw the footage as well. Oh, gosh. Yeah, well, yeah it's quite upsetting to watch. Yeah, very much so. Uh -huh. yeah. Edna, we talked before in other episodes about um, how you followed along with Jackie and Allison and the crew as they were going through the homes. In this particular one, we got to see when they came through a bedroom and into a bathroom that the faucet had turned on. What was that like? 
Um, well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I wasn't surprised. I, I just remember other episodes where that had happened as well. Um, mainly like the church hill, walking to a bathroom and, oh, the water's running. Yeah. And not being able to account for it. And I, it's funny, when you're doing this show, when things happen, it, it everything becomes more normalized, very strangely. <laughs> you don't get really yes. <laughs> Very well, you do, but it seems more. Oh, yes, of course. Well, the water's running, and that must be the spirit, you know. It's yeah, just take yeah, it away. It, 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 it's more like when we go in somewhere and the water's not running, and you go, like, <laughs> Oh, wait, that's that moment. <laughs> of course, it isn't a mystery. Holly, water, water's it's running. running. Oh, I've got shivers down my spine now. Look. Oh my God, I, I I heard it. Oh. Oh my God. Who's turned that on then? Spirit will do things like that. You don't realise at the time. Um, it's only when you think about it and you say, ah, yeah, that makes sense. Why they, And they were trying to draw us, our attention to the water. Absolutely. And, and it might not have been drawing attention to the water. It might have been trying to draw our attention to that room, you know. Mm. Uh, but mm -hmm. in, in that instance, it was water that was very uh, significant as part of the uh, rescue situation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely was, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. The graves were covered. You saw the graveyard. That's you had right. the graveyard in, in yeah. your premonitions, I think. Or you... Or you had the graveyard as we were walking around. That's what you could see. I could see it, and yeah. It. And they were all underwater. Oh, my God. I can see a graveyard. And the graves are covered in water. I'd love it if you could tell me about, or tell us, like, like you were, we're just talking amongst ourselves, um, about the spirit of attachment and what that was like to take that out of Kieran. It was oh, Jackie really, did. Uh, yeah, Jackie and Allison did most of that. Mm. Yeah, well, well, we worked together with our spirit team on doing that. Um, spirit attachments are sometimes it can be quite easy to, you know, just like, like, why are you doing this? We need to find out why first. And in that instance, uh, the spirit was not really communicated. It was so connected to Kieran. That, that yeah wasn't really communicating uh with us, with us. no I yeah so that. we had to almost like it's like drawing something out you pull it you have to pull it yeah. out um but the whole time you're doing that it looks like you're just sort of pulling like this and i think allison was stood behind karen with her hands on her shoulder i was shoulders. giving her some healing while healing. you were so healing you, and grounding you know. Physically. Yeah. So it's a two yeah. thing. Ian Allison begin a spirit detachment. Focusing their psychic energies, the rescue mediums begin the arduous task of pulling the unwanted spirit from the girl. thing so i was working on more like a uh an ethereal level and an uh, etheric level and alison was working on a physical um in order to connect through the physical vibrations of the body to the spirit within to try and draw them out so all the time in my mind i'm saying you know you want to come and talk to me really i i, I can understand what it is you want I can help you. So all the time this is going on in my head, talking yeah. to this spirit while Alison is communicating with Kieran. It's quite a complicated process. And although on camera it looks as if it happens really quickly, it didn't. It, no, doesn't. it, can, go, it can go on and on and on. Sometimes yeah. you need a break and have to go back. Um, yeah. You know, so you, you're pulling all the time. So as that spirit is releasing a little bit, I'm pulling more and more and bringing them into my energy field so eventually it was like 
I've got him here. Right, okay, Kerry, you can ju just go. Go quickly. Before, Your face was bright you know, right as well. Yeah. 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 Your face yeah. was bright. Was. Just pull in. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Can you see how red I've, I've yeah. gone? Yeah. That's because I've got the spirit right in my space. And we're going to go and deal with this in okay. a minute and find out who this is. And we'll get it sorted. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Having removed the attachment from Kieran, Jackie becomes the spirit's host. Obviously, he's really close then. And then obviously, we've got to contain him because we don't want him rushing off. So we have exactly. to sort of do all that. Um, communicate with him like really quickly, expeditiously. Right. That's a big word. Isn't oh, it? I'm impressed. I am impressed. The <laughs> 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 say she was a star because that must have been so scary for her. Um, and you know, she put her trust in us, yeah. which you know it is just uh, phenomenal, isn't it? You know, yeah. And um, you know, trust in that. You know, we we, we do our thing and that. You know the spirit would be released and she'd get her own sort of body and mind and yeah and all of that back yeah 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 and obviously because she was under 18 years of age we um asked permission of her parents because um, neither of us will normally yeah. work with someone who is younger uh, under, yeah. under that age uh, but they wanted that to happen you say um out, when we were outside because we i think we encountered something an energy outside but not necessarily the energy of a spirit when we very yeah. first started um yeah. and you said something about how giving showing respect or i, I feel yeah, like I, I, have think to was, I, I felt um to have like it was sort of like some a, a little quiet time yeah. And I had to stand still for a mark of respect. But that's yeah. what, it was just really strange. So, you know. Jackie, I feel like I need to stand here. Like this as a mark of respect for something or someone. Yeah. You know, mm. sort of few minutes silence. But nice, sort of very respectful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't a horrible feeling with it. I felt that um, kept getting a bad leg as well. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. and what the, well, I don't know if it was the youngest daughter. It's me, Mira. Yeah, Mira yeah, the youngest. Also yeah. had a bad leg. Yeah. But then oh, it's a shooting pain. There's something wrong with his leg. He's on the ground in the water and the mud something wrong with his leg as well because I could I could so I had the sense of sort of somebody limping it only happened one time I was in bed and all of a sudden I had a sharp pain in my leg and I've never had this before I would use the term like as though a knife was being dragged through my flesh I, in, on your leg yeah. spirit that we sent to the light he didn't he die in the end of something he had an accident hurt his leg and you know that he never recovered from that. Yeah, was so, it a fracture in his leg? It's a his fracture. Leg is fracture. Fracture. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. Benjamin died in March of 1914. Now, what do you think he died with? He fractured his leg. Incredible. Wow. I, 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 I just that. can't believe. I mean, like, wow. No. As this historical document shows, the fracture of Benjamin's leg led to severe medical complications. For Benjamin Watson, the end came on March the 17th, 1914. It's all salient information, all like clues, and it's mm. like putting a, you know, jigsaw pieces together to make the full picture, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Of course, we don't know what we're gonna find when we go in, and we, you know, we have no idea. Mm. Um, and when it's sort of, when the spirit isn't communicating with us straight away, then we just feel on a hiding to nothing, don't we? So looking round, I think the expression we used was it, it was void. There was no, we, we were aware of spirit being there. I feel as though it's empty, as though there should be something here. There's a void somewhere. Yeah. While Jackie and Alison sense much psychic energy, they are unable to establish direct contact with the spirit. Isn't it? 
in, in this episode as well, um, the dyna dynamic of three, there were three daughters. Um, I believe Kieran is the middle daughter. Uh, did you see evidence or do you believe it to be um, the case that if, if one child in the family is intuitive or psychic, it's a little bit, the other ones have a little bit of the same dust on them? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, I'm obviously psychic, but my sister isn't. So um, sometimes it can be like the whole family yeah. could be psychic, couldn't they, Jackie? Yeah. And then in other cases, you know, one may be, others may not. I think it, you know, I, I don't know where I get my gift from. You know, it might be somebody like a great, 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 great grandmother or something going way, you know, in my family tree. I, <laughs> but yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. So what did you think, Jackie, about the family? They were definitely open, weren't they? Very, very much so. All of them um, very um, in, intuitive, some more than others. Yeah. Um, even Noreen, the, 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 the father, very open. Yes. I think uh, Kieran's experience would likely have opened them up even more to, um, you know, how wonderful that she had a family who were able to understand there's something going on here yeah. that, uh, that is, is out of our control. It's nothing that we need. A general practitioner for there is something here that is happening to her uh, mm. let's try and get some help let's try and get the right help for her rather than years ago when somebody who was having an episode like that they would just be put into a you know yeah. a secure mental unit, asylum. A, a, yeah. a mental yeah. asylum michael when you and edna uh, go to interview people before you sort of take them on. Yep. Uh, quite often, and do you pick up on the idea that one or both of the people that you're meeting uh, have intuitive abilities? Um, for me, I sort of feel uh, who is the primary focus of the uh, of whatever entity or whatever's happening, and I, I personally feel that oh, I I know that. This is on the, the the female of the house, or this is on the male of the house. That's what I feel. I don't know what Edna thinks. Uh, in this case, we uh, interviewed everybody. The, the whole family was there. And it, it was so apparent that all of them had had experiences. Um, yeah, I, I was just looking at my interview notes, and I thought five six pages actually just wow. of notes of experiences mm. that they'd all experienced mm. over time uh they definitely were i think all very open to it and um kieran's certainly more affected mm. than the others but so were there any surprises in this one that we don't know um no i was with there weren't any other rescues um okay. i think most of the important information um was what appeared on on uh, TV. What um, surprised me with that particular episode was how flat the energy was in in mm. the house. In uh, and uh, as as a medium, knowing that you're going into a property because they've got an issue with spirit, to find nothing when you get there. Even though you're being given the clues, like, you know, the water was turned on in the back, we heard someone, it was like a scream, wasn't it? We were downstairs and we heard, we both heard a scream. We heard a scream upstairs. And we, we both got, heard it at the same time. That was like yeah. the heart was going, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it wasn't and one of the crew. Odd, don't you think it's odd? Very you know, odd. That we've not come across anything. What was that? Did it come from upstairs? I don't know. It was like a... Was it like a scream? Let's go upstairs, shall we? In hopes of finding the source of this psychic scream, the rescue mediums are sent to the second floor. And then being aware of someone running down the stairs, and I think we heard it rather yeah. than... And then we followed back down again. Oh, somebody there, Al, then. 
Following the otherworldly footsteps, the rescue mediums are drawn to the main floor of the home. Who was it? Where have they gone? What's going on? Because there was no clear indication of of what was happening. And then you think, have they done a runner? Have they, have, have they gone out and they're not coming back? We're going to be here for a year. Yeah. And we've still not sorted this problem out in this so. house. We'll have to come back <laughs> to try and sort it out. Um, it was and that one. can happen. It like, can happen yeah. where you have to go back. And I, I've done um, a rescue here in uh, in England. Um, I think it was three times we had to go back before we eventually managed to speak to the spirit who was causing all the problems um, mm. enough to calm that person down and gain a trust. They had to yeah. gain trust in us to be able to go, okay, yeah, I trust you. I can tell you what's going on then now. But it took a while. It took like three three days or three visits anyway before that the only happened. Thing, other than what we experienced outside the mark of respect was when we were in the kitchen, I heard, but I wasn't sure if it was male or female, which is interesting because usually we either get a feel or you can tell if it's male mm. or female. Yeah. I'm waiting. Oh, that yeah. was it. That was it. I've just had a message, I think, for us. Oh, really? I'm waiting. Male or female? It's indistinguishable at the moment, but I'll let you know if I get anything clearer, mm. but the words were clear. Okay. I'm waiting. Waiting Where? for what? Us. Well, we're here. I know. <laughs> But odd, don't you think it's odd, you Very know, odd that we've not come across anything? Which can be really, it can be disconcerting in so many different ways. And one is you just think, oh my God, this, is this the calm before the storm type yeah. of which we've had? Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, it, and it was in a way, wasn't it? It was such yeah. a strong one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you always think then, like, Edna's going to be walking around with a headset on, writing <laughs> things down pencil poised to write and there's nothing for nothing. coming there's nothing <laughs> at all <laughs> I, I was i was starting to panic because i was afraid that we weren't going to have um information to for me to research yeah yeah, yeah. it's a bit scary <laughs> what a great great episode scary to watch as a viewer for sure you think but Kieran's an ordinary person this could happen yeah. to anybody but she did yeah. walk by someone I can't remember how it went I think Edna if it came up after that she walked by the graveyard every day right uh, yes yes there's that. mention that Kara said that they they moved by there they were all buried in a private cemetery located in this corner of their original property these graves remain today mere blocks from the homeowner's residence. We and this the area day. here, we pass every day. Yeah. Gosh. Between. We do see the graves. Mm. At one time I said it looked so peaceful not knowing it was a graveyard. We believe that as you've come home from there, feeling all of that, Benjamin has seen your light going past and you've said you go past that cemetery on a daily basis. He's seen your light and he's thought, oh, that's a nice little light. I think I'll follow that one there. The rescue mediums believed that it was Kieran's powerful psychic ability, untrained and newly discovered, that attracted the troubled spirit of Benjamin Watson. In between us and we were communicating. Yes. Was it Ben and... Benjamin and... Was it Robert? Robert, yes. That Robert. was it. Yeah. Yeah, Benjamin we did. Benjamin and you Robert. Were, yeah, you got one name, I got the other when we yeah, were sat there. Yeah, that's right. And they were the two names that we connected uh, with. But weren't they very church-going people? And yes. from Scot they were from Scotland, weren't they, Edna? They, they were. Um, this was the Ebenezer Baptist Church. That's, that's it. it. I remember and, that. Um, I believe that it might have been their dad uh, that had donated um, a, a, a wow. sizable piece of land to the church and yes. where that cemetery was. Yeah, and that's the mark of respect, wasn't it? The... That's it. ...of their investigation. John and Margaret Watson came with their family to Canada from Scotland. They had seven children. 
Two of their sons were called Robert and Benjamin. And they were the two names that we'd been given while we were doing the rescue. Now, I don't know if this is his name. I've just got Ben. I had Robert. The person that we rescued is Benjamin. Born in 1830, Benjamin Watson came from a farming family which owned a considerable acreage in the Brampton area. Their holdings included the land on which the homeowner's house currently sits. A couple of minutes silence, he did. Yeah. Very, very appropriate uh, words that she said because this family was so involved with their church. Benjamin Watson and his family were devout Baptists. So dedicated that they even allocated a section of their land to the Ebenezer Baptist Church. He actually leased one half an acre of land to the cemetery trustees. This was known as the Ebenezer Baptist Church Cemetery. The relatives of Benjamin Watson were all buried in a private cemetery located in this corner of their original property. These graves remain today mere blocks from the homeowner's residence. He was protecting this. He was protecting the whole place, wasn't he? He was protecting yeah. the um, cemetery um, yeah. because of how he, I think he tended to it beforehand. And so he was carrying, it was either the caretaker of the cemetery or whatever. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You're making me think that at the end of the show, <clears throat> we should have done a, uh, <laughs> maybe a different uh, joke in the chairs. In the chairs. When you say that Benjamin was the, uh, the uh, caretaker of the graveyard. And uh, then you say, Alison, uh, oh, wow, he was the caretaker. And then Jackie says, yeah, it's a bit of a dead end job. Oh. <laughs> hey. For some reason that just sprung into my mind, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my funny. goodness. We actually, uh, do you know what? For that episode, we filmed two different chairs. We I don't remember that, did we? we yes. Both You've of got our a good husbands, memory, Jackie. <laughs> both of our husbands were over from England. Oh my God, yes. We were, standing, we, they were standing behind the... Yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we did a cheers with them in Edna's house. <laughs> um, Edna had a little bar area at the time and the, we did a little cheers there. Uh, but we didn't touch... That wasn't the, the vinyl one that the, um, no. the editors used. We used yeah. uh, just one with the two of us, with just Alison and I in, in yeah. the bar. Because I think it was getting, I think your John and my Steve were to pass the drinks over. That and was for it, us to do yeah. the chairs then. But we didn't yeah. end, end up doing that. We, we ended yeah. up with a completely different one um, in a bar, I think. <laughs> yeah. Bye. 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 Their work done, the ladies seek a different sort of spirit possession. Do you know what, Alison? I just love it when spirit goes through into the light. I know. That light is just so wonderful. Yeah, it is. I mean, I use my hands all the time. I know you do. Why do you use your hands all the time, Jackie? Well, Alison, many hands make light work. Oh, dear <laughs> me. Cheers. cheers. Right. So, you know, seeing as though you've done a cheers, Michael, and we're talking yeah. about the cheers, maybe we should do a cheers. Sure. Okay. Cheers, everyone. Thank okay. you so much. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. 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 To the dead end job. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share and subscribe to VeryParanormal.com, the portal for everything paranormal. You'll be so glad you did. Cheers!